So my name is Claire Delcourt and I'm a product manager here at Abstra. Um, I'm going to talk about our brand new NSXT integration, what is the, that, that all about, and really how does it serve our massive goal which is to reduce OPEX uh, for our customers. So NSXT in the data center means you have to deploy all your NSXT infrastructure on top of your existing fabric, right? So what do you need to consider when you do that? You have a couple of design options, you have some key requirements that the NSXT infrastructure is going to ask you to do. And so let's have a look at those requirements uh, very quickly. So first you have to you know, think about how do you want to attach your server to your top of rack switch? Do you want how many links do you want? Do you want those links to be uh, aggregated as a lag? Do you want to have a redundancy for your leaf in your top of rack, yes or no, and so forth. Uh, once you have made those choices, you can, move, you can, uh, you can look at the requirements for connectivity uh, of your NSXT infrastructure. So you have, from the fabric perspective, connect, you have to connect all those different types of VLAN ID that your infrastructure is going to generate. For example, if I look at the compute node, it's going to generate management traffic in a specific VLAN ID, vMotion traffic in another VLAN, IP storage in another VLANs. Uh, all my overlay communication between my NSXT uh, nodes uh, that is carrying my VM traffic is going to go over a four VLANs. And I want to isolate all those different types of traffic, not only on the server, but also in my fabric. So I have to think about how to do that, right? Uh, lastly, the, the thing that I want to consider is uh, for my overlay interface that, you, is, that is used to carry this extra tunnel encapsulation uh, for my VM traffic, I need to make sure that my MTU size is configured properly in my fabric to, to allow that traffic to go through. I need to make sure my MTU size is at least 1600 uh, bytes uh, towards my server and maybe more in my fabric. So those are all the things that as a physical network operator I need to think about before I go ahead and tell my team they can deploy an SXT, right? And it's going to generate a bunch of configuration. It's not complex, extremely complex configuration, although uh, it, it can happen if you want to do things like interconnecting VMs to your bare metal server directly from your NSX node, or if you have to start thinking of how you deploy your edge VM to interconnect your virtual workloads with your external uh, network and the rest of your infrastructure. So there's a bit of you know, configuration that needs to happen on the fabric. And the thing, that is, uh, the thing that is typical about that configuration is that it has to be identical on both my fabric side and my NSXT infrastructure side. The VLAN ID has to match. The MTU has to be correct on both systems. The lag configuration has to be uh, correct on both systems. So what's... Uh, what is important here to consider is that if I have to do that on one or two racks, it's fine. It's going to take me a couple of days maybe uh, to make sure it works end to end. But I'll be able to deploy, to, to tell my NS16 infrastructure team, yeah, I'm ready to deploy the service. But imagine having to deploy NS16 infrastructure in 100 racks, right, to build a huge data center. That configuration is becoming very complex and tedious, right? So you really want to automate all that. Uh, you want to also automate that because it's the type of configuration that although uh, is not that hard to automate, is highly error prone. There's still a lot of user input on both systems that you need to uh, provide to your, even your automation system. And they typically have no end-to-end -end validation between the two. Yes, So question. just to just confirm, we're talking about intent-based design, right? That's something that you have in the existing product that it's a core design tenant, right? And this carries forward to your integrations with NSXT to make sure that the platform is designed correctly. I'm going to I'm going to talk about the, the what, how we solve the, the problem of automating the fabric uh, design and the physical infrastructure configuration to have something that is NX, NSXT infrastructure ready, and to validate end-to-end -end configuration. That's, that's actually the the goal of, of the presentation is to talk about how we can better integrate those two systems to to streamline those operations that usually tend to slow down deployments. Right, yes, I yes, just yes. wanted to make sure we're linking, yeah. we're linking back we're to linking that same concept, to... not just about operations, yes, but exactly. design. Right, correct, Absolutely. yes, yes, yes. Yep. So overall, you know, the goal for everybody is to be able to go to market fast, to, to build my data, data center fast. I don't want to slow down deployments with manual configuration and error-prone uh, workflows. Um, you know, just another quick, quick touch on, on visibility. The lack of visibility as a physical network engineer on my virtual infrastructure 
is really not helping me either for my day two operation, right? I don't know where my applications are running on my servers. I don't know if a rack is empty or full of things. And I, won't, I, I can't give any guidance usually on you know, uh, my virtual infrastructure team on how to better balance the workload. Or if I want to put a rack in maintenance, you know, how do I make sure there's no more applications running there? So the two problems we're trying to solve with NSXT integration is really this end-to-end uh, -end automation and validation and uh, providing better visibility. So how do we do that? Uh, we Sorry, and just to confirm, yeah. when you talk about providing visibility, you're talking about in the underlay. I'm talking about provided, product, providing visibility to the physical network operator on what is running in NSXT, visibility of virtual machines, right? Where are they in my physical topology? Ah, okay. Right? Or uh, is this server that I see as a black box right now, is actually a hypervisor? Oh, great, it's an SXD edge. Ah, okay. And there are virtual networks configured on that edge. Right? Today, you have to go to an SXT to see those things. But as an operator of a physical network, I might not have access to an SXT because that's the business of the virtual team, right? So there's no uh, single system right now to, to provide me with this information. And if you want to have those type of system, you actually have to build it your own or you have to buy something else. Or we don't want to force people to do that. So we want to, to provide tighter integration between the system as much as we can. So you don't have to build anything yourself, right? Um, so let's talk about this initial you know, configuration that I have to do in my fabric. With AOS, we can completely streamline the design of the rack. You know, you can, in a couple of clicks, tell uh, how the servers are connected to your leaf, how many uplinks uh, you want to, to have, how do you want those, uh, those uh, links to be configured logically. And once your design is done, you just need to ask AOS to deploy it, uh, and AOS will generate automatically all the configuration that is vendor specific. So Mansour explained that we are, not, uh, we are completely agnostic on the hardware, and we support many different uh, actual network operating system uh, for the devices, so we can we don't need to ask the user to enter anything that is specific, configuration specific to the, for the box. It's really a high level intent. So we also automate completely the, the deployment of the virtual network in the fabric infrastructure. Uh, we do that either using la, uh, local rack VLANs, uh, that where it's only significant within a rack, or we can stretch even L2 virtual network across racks using uh, EVPN, uh, VXN technologies from leaf to leaf, and we automatically configure the EVPN configuration for you, so you don't have to worry about the complexity of EVPN anymore. And we automatically configure Jimbo frames everywhere, everywhere, so we don't have to worry about the Jimbo frame requirement either. And on top of that, everything is intent-based. It means for us that we verify that the state of the network match your intent, right? So here, there's nothing new. What is really new in this release? That we already uh, did, uh, you know, a year ago. What we do uh, in this release that is new is that we actually go and talk to NSXT to collect information about what is configured uh, on the NSXT nodes uplink there. Why do we do that? Because if I want to validate that my lag, my VLAN, my NTU are properly configured end-to-end, -end, I need to go and collect the information there. And that basically gives uh, a way for uh, AOS intent-based analytics to validate configuration not only on the fabric, but also now on the NSXT side. So I can Im immediately detect things like, I have a VLAN mismatch. On one hand, NSXT said that it has a VLAN-backed interface using VLAN 200. I don't have any corresponding VLAN in my fabric that's using VLAN 200. That's probably impacting my services right now. And that will, uh, so that, that's what the integration is all about. We also provide fast remediation workflow for everything that, how, that we know how to resolve on the fabric. The user doesn't have to fix it manually uh, through AOS again. He can ask AOS for an automatic remediation. And we'll, we'll see that in the demo uh, later. And yes. the prior slide, QoS, was slightly mentioned. And this slide, QoS, is slightly mentioned just as an object. Does this actually help make QoS common standard actually function? Is that any function of it? Or Where it do you shows see QoS? Up there and, and it's right there. That says QoS in green underneath collect intent. AOS. 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 Oh, AOS. So, AOS. That's our problem. Okay, then. So, <laughs> then. <laughs> so, on that point. Yes. Because d can you actually use this to make QoS a standard? I think because QoS is a pain 
period it with, yeah. with, with like hardware. Yeah, it would mean we'd need to provide a level of abstraction for QoS, and yeah. we'll take care of configuring it on the on on your devices, uh, whether it's Cisco, Arista, oh, yeah. Juniper, and so forth. Absolutely. So the second important um, benefit uh, of this integration is that now, if you look at the physical network topology in AOS, you can actually see where your virtual workloads are in the network, and you can make smarter decisions about about that, about uh, about your fabric. You can also directly correlate link failure and device failure to, uh, to applications, right? So providing better visibility, providing better um, uh, validations across systems. And finally, uh, we are also collecting from NSXT all the security policies that are applied on the, the NSXT virtual networks. And we are smartly or intelligently uh, uh, looking whether any of the source or destination of the security policies defined there applies to bare metal workloads. So if in an environment where I have a mix of virtual workloads and bare metal servers, and I'm using a, a VLAN logical segment in NSXT to interconnect those two, I can now not only uh, enforce security policies in NSXT uh, NVDSs, I can also enforce the security policy closer to the source, directly on the top of rack switch where the bare metal server is. I can actually start monitoring and restricting traffic between bare metals, where NSXT doesn't have uh, reach. And uh, Rex is going to demo, actually, that use case specifically. I'm going to demo um, right away the you know, first use case, which is how we accelerate the deployment of NSXT, how, we detect, uh, valid, how do we detect misconfiguration between the systems. Uh, and we, uh, that's the time, I'm looking at the time, and it's pretty good, because we wanted to spend the most of the time on the demo and uh, have something interactive with you. So let's do that. <coughs> uh, any questions so far? Just one on yes. the, the intent. So knowing what the intent is, so you're relying on uh, the configuration of NSXT. So the admins will go into the NSXT-based interfaces to yes. configure everything in there. And that's where you're essentially interrogating NSXT to yes. find out what the intent is. It's exactly like okay. that. For security. Yes, exactly yeah. like yeah. that. So we, for plan, we translate the NSX configuration, we translate that as an intent for the fabric. Yep. Mm. Okay. And then you're, you're able to bridge that across even to physical devices. Exactly. That's, that's and, what you need. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah.